All right, everybody, welcome back once again. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox, here with my guest, Liz Novello. We are in Brooklyn and New Jersey, respectively, talking about the scene on the street in the business community, how attention is a big, is, is as much currency right now as getting those transactions, especially for those businesses that have closed. But there's some other components uh, that I have uh, learned, like Liz was just saying, we're all learning right now. Uh, I, I've always been somebody involved uh, in my community because I love it and my children have grown up here and gone to the schools and it's just like the idyllic place I always wanted to live. Um, one of the things that happened here at the restaurant that was a real game changer was uh, there, there was an organization that started to collect funds uh, just a nonprofit from donations just from people that had the money. Uh, they were going to the restaurants that were still open in the area, giving them the money and saying, we need X number of lunches or dinners for hospital workers because in a lot of the places, the cafeterias have closed. They're super busy. They don't have enough time. And it was a real gear shifter for us to where all of a sudden we were like, oh, okay, we play a part and it was it was a morale booster when i told my chefs when i sat down because it, it, we're a small kitchen i was like can we do 100 200 we did 200 meals for methodist hospital the other day it was insane the, the dining room floors were covered in food we were just slopping it all over the place it looked like a, a mess hall um but just saying to them this is on the table it's going to be hard from a strategic uh point of view can we do it do you want to do it and the smile on their faces it, i hadn't seen them smile that way since this went down and it changed the morale of everything that we did and, and all of a sudden it was like we'll, we're gonna be okay have you have you heard stories or or experienced something similar like that with some of the either for yourself or some of the businesses that you've been highlighting yeah. with your instagram live yeah definitely well first of all i'm sure that your chefs are they love what they're doing right they, they do do it and so um, their passion is what makes it. And I think helping others for me is like, I really equate doing these lives, even when I was in the streets doing them from the shops, I get the same feeling. I get really, mm -hmm. that's my high to help people. Yep. And so I'm sure your chefs were so glad just to be in the kitchen doing their thing and knowing that these are going, these meals are going to people on the front lines has to be mind blowing for them just to feel really great. Yeah, they were um, elated. Same thing. Like uh, Lisa uh, yesterday, uh, Lisa with the heart, uh, she mm -hmm. did, I asked her to do a free CPR seminar. You know, it's a basic one, right? And something that people definitely could use reminders of, but she feels really inspired to continue and to share. Um, and so just having her be so thankful and grateful made me feel even better. That's what really propels me to want to continue to help. Uh, my husband and I are, have been working possibly even more than ever. Uh, his lack of commute to the city gives him a lot more time here doing work and really focus on that. Um, and going to bed, you know, we do everything from our phones. So yeah. our work kind of doesn't end and we have to remind ourselves, you know, at 1030 to unplug a little bit. Um, and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't, but I think we're both really full throttle on like, let's make the best out of this and help mm. as many people as we can. Yeah. No, same here. My kids remind me at 11 p.m. every night. I've been gone all day and they're like, can you put that thing down? My, my yes. oldest daughter last night. And like I couldn't yet because it was in the, I was in the middle of something important. Sure. And then as, as soon as I was done, I I tickled the shit out of her. <laughs> there you and go. then she wasn't mad anymore. Um, they're so and, forgiving, right? They're so forgiving of us when they're like my daughter. Literally, we started watching one thing we've started doing as a family that, that we've never done before is we have a show now together, Master yes. Chef Juniors. I I hope my kids are going to start cooking during the second phase. of of the pandemic so i'm like okay get some notes kids <laughs> uh, but my daughter will like knock my phone down and be like please mommy and 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 the minute i do i'm like or if i'm like let me just get back to my my client or this response she's like okay they're so forgiving of us so yeah they're watching definitely. their parents you know do what they love and we have to mind shift sometimes though 
Yeah. And for my kids, I mean, they, we live right here, like yep. literally on the same block as all the businesses and they've just grown up in it. That's all they've ever known. Sure. So they're, they're kind of used to that, you know, and they've, they've, sure. they're a part of everything. They're a face of the whole thing. Even my two-year-old, she just walks in and she's like, like you're she's all here to see bringing me. in so much business for you. <laughs> Well, they can't be here right now. It's kind of odd because they're used to being here all the time. And now it's just, you know, to keep everybody safe. We've got to keep a little distance. But they, they've definitely never heard it. They're, they've yeah. always been, they're, they're, they're my little cheerleaders. Um, so I've noticed just like from the ones that I've seen of your shows, you had the cheese lady. That was amazing. Yes. Oh, oh my yes. God. Yep. So was she so still... Much. Is she still in operation? Is she able to send food to people? And so I think um, she has a. She's first of all super talented. I met her over a year ago, um, maybe six months ago actually, and I just always thought she was super creative, um, and and smart. And so she had shared her story. And I she's a private chef first, mm -hmm. so she's continuing to cook for her clients. Oh, good. Um, and also coming up with, I just saw for Mother's Day, these like little cheese boxes, you know? So I thought yeah. that was really clever. And uh, she's been continuing, I believe she was doing like these pizza kits uh, for kids. And I thought that was great. Um, awesome. The time to pivot and she's definitely using that to her advantage. So I was really pleased for her to say yes and that she would join my show. And then another one I saw, which was really fascinating, was the virtual tour for homes. You mm. had a younger guy on, and he was yes. just like so animated and hilarious. And but that's something I'd been talking about my with my real estate friends here. We had this conversation less than six months ago, where we we were. I was asking, has it gotten to the point yet where you can buy a home online? Can you just like? Yeah, I think I think there is. And it's I, like this close now, right? Because at the, at the time they were like, no, but but it's really it's really it, getting it close. So how did how did that feel to you compared to like you seem like a person that likes to get in there with the person sure. and walk around and make the connection? It's a, that's a much different yeah, experience. It's really tough. I have a deal right now on the table that literally I negotiated during the pandemic and never stepped foot in the house. That was a first. Wow. I only looked at pictures and their, you know, makeshift virtual tour. And that was really difficult for me. And so I have a great team uh, that surrounds me. Um, so the attorney that I'm friendly with was uh, taking care of the deal. And I, and I called her and I said, Ashley, I have not been in this house. I need to make <laughs> sure that, th that we have all the protective language. And yeah. so even having all these inspections uh, that we really push for our clients to have, because you should know what's going on inside your home before you purchase it, no surprises. Mm -hmm. um, we rely on their reports heavily. So lots of conversations uh, and just having the right people surround you. And are the, are the buyers able to go into the home before? So, the, so crazy story, this buyer, the people that are going to buy right now virtually are people that have to. So right. this client is also a Florida client. I had two Florida clients back to back uh, that needs to be out by the end of May. And so she went into the house. They were only allowing right at the start of the pandemic, they were only allowing showings for like, but like a number at a time. So only two showings on Saturday and she got to go in. And so she called me after and she's like, okay, I think this is the one. And so we just kind of, you know, use that information because at the end of the day, uh, it's a very scary thing to purchase and only been, been in the home one time. Usually uh, yeah. clients, buyers are able to go back in when the inspector is in there, but a yeah. lot of inspectors are A, either not doing it, only doing it on vacant homes, or B, they're going in and I sat in my car for three hours right outside that house as the inspector was yeah. inside, wow. you know, so, yeah. and then pulled down my car window. He's, he's six feet or actually I'm a little cuckoo. So a little bit more. And, uh, and so he's sharing what his thoughts are and of course having the report, but it's, you know, at the end of the day, I'm guiding my clients as well as I can. One of the things that I said is like, great news. I just ran the comps. I'm pretty confident. Even if you bought this house and in six months, eight months, nine months, 12 months, you're unhappy. I think we'll make some money on it. So, yeah. um, you know, it's not typical and ideal for, for people not to be inside their homes, but it happens 
a lot because people are relocating and they don't have the ability. So they're relying on pictures and video and their agents. Yeah, that's fascinating. I've asked a lot of companies lately, you know, how digitally you're adjusting your business and, and we've all had to do it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, my wine store has been open for 12 years. We've talked about having a, a website like where you could purchase yeah. for 12 yeah. years. Yeah. I never did anything. Not Two months ago, it was done overnight. It was like, yeah. boop, okay, here you go. But sometimes that need, that's, go ahead. Sometimes you need that little push, right? Yeah, and, yeah. But like, I have to say your, your, <laughs> your situation has been the most extreme I've heard of people. I've heard, like, I had a whiskey guy on. He's like, I'm going to start doing virtual tastings mm. just to keep educating people, yeah. you know. But, yeah. that, you know, it's that's something that's nice. You know, if they're right in front of you, you can smell it together. Yeah. But like to sell a home and to go through all yeah. that digitally, it, it's insane. It's insane even as an agent because I like to be able to have eyes right. that, you know, not every buyer has being in homes and situations. So it it's definitely new. It's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. It's I, I've tried to uh, turn this couple on to you as well because I was we'd been having this conversation recently and I was like I just read about this lady who did a virtual I asked them that they were doing it they're yeah. still doing showing similar to the way uh, you described where you they you um, went in just you and one other person you came out the inspector whoever yeah. goes in so essentially I'm I'm a door opener these days yeah. so I have clients that are coming in and I open the lockbox they go in. Fully, I'm um, fully gloved and masked. Yeah. You're fully gloved and masked and booties and the whole shebang. <laughs> and we're doing it different, but people are still out there buying. Yeah. Um, I mean, we. I think we've all had to make adjustments. I'm doing things in the restaurant that I haven't done in years. Um, mm. Just because that, that's just the way things are going where life was, I was always busy, but uh, I didn't have to do as much of the manual labor over sure. the last few years and mm -hmm. i mean there's nothing is out of question these days sure. it's just like yeah. i know that i'll take care of that my shoes are a wreck they're destroyed <laughs> <There you go. laughs> nothing nice anymore all right we're gonna take one more quick break come back we'll do our last segment okay awesome all right see you in a few everybody you're listening to the entrepreneurial web